So it all started about eight years ago. I jumped into Premiere Pro by Adobe, and I really jump-started my personal and professional career with video editing. And since I jumped into Premiere Pro and Adobe, I really never looked back. Not again. Until now. So if you're new to my channel, my name is Joseph Lipson. I'm a content creator based out of Seattle, Washington, and I like to make tech videos that can help you in your everyday life. So if you're into the same thing, you're interested in this, make sure you hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and we can grow this community together. I was real frustrated with Premiere Pro and mostly as years upgraded and new versions came out every year, the bugs got buggier, the reliability got less reliable and altogether editing was not really fun anymore and it was something I always found really fun to do, really soothing and I jumped into DaVinci Resolve and really up to this date haven't really looked back. So a disclaimer, is it intimidating to switch? It is 100% intimidating. You go your entire life for me, eight, nine years in Adobe Premiere and Adobe apps and you learn the way to doing it. You learn it into a way where you almost know everything of what you can and can't do. And to jump into a whole new software, a lot of the things are similar, but it's a whole new software and you're really starting from scratch and starting from the ground up. And it's an intimidating thing, but once you jump in, once you get learning, once you learn what you can and can't do and the opportunities are really endless and you're able to basically do whatever you want and really learn and it's almost a real fun process to learn how to edit again. So the first thing I'm gonna talk about is one thing Resolve gives you is a free version and there's a free and a studio version and the studio version is $295, one-time payment. So that right there is different than Adobe where you have monthly payments, but just like Final Cut where you have a one-time payment. But you have the free version, so you can jump in and see if you really like this app and see if it's really meant for you. So what does a studio version give you that I needed? It gives you motion blur and noise reduction, which is really big when you're shooting in the dark. And I use motion blur a lot with transitions and all that stuff. For me, a big thing was motion tracking and camera tracking. I do a lot of motion tracking, a lot of camera tracking, a lot of uh, masking out people, which I mean, if you're in the After Effects world, rotoscoping, I use a lot of that and that wasn't available in the free version. So that was right there. One of the reasons I needed to upgrade right away because I do a lot of that and love doing that. And I think it adds to the uh, production value of whatever you're editing slash producing. The next thing is speed and reliability. And Premiere crashed a lot. There was a lot of bugs in it. My Premiere projects were always crashing. I found myself always backtracking, always starting from scratch. And I was sick and tired of it. And one thing with Resolve, DaVinci Resolve is when the program crashes or freezes or you get the death ball, it automatically saves when you force quit, automatically. It doesn't automatically save some auto save somewhere and you hope it does it. It automatically does it no matter what, but it doesn't do it as much. I've done it maybe in the 20 videos I've edited in Resolve, maybe once or twice. And every time I'm able to force quit out, come right back in and it takes me exactly to the point that I had to force quit out at. Before this, I was never really an organized person inside of my projects, but with DaVinci, you have master bins, power bins, and smart bins. And your master bins is where you dump all your footage. So you have your A-roll, your B-roll, your card one, your card two, your audio, your assets, whatever it may be. I just find it a lot easier to organize and be organized within there. And then you have your power bins, which is something I find real nice. And these are assets you build that open up in every project. So for me, like I have light leaks, I have my open intro sequence, I have film burns, I have all of these in my power bins and it's just like assets you use in every single video. So they're always there and you don't have to bring them into every project. All right, now the interface. They have nailed this interface. They started from the ground up and made this something that an editor wants to be in for hours at a time. Editing is not something that you do an hour here and an hour there. It's something that you're in for multiple hours. So the fact that they went from the ground up and made it something that's appealing to the eye, organizational to the eye, and something that you can really just spend your hours in and have fun doing it is real important. So they've really nailed this interface and what it looks like, and I'm a huge fan of it. And then within the interface, there's the seven section tabs, and these are probably the most important things in here and something that is one of the most intimidating things to go through, but is the most important. And that is the media tab, the cut tab, the edit tab, 
the Fusion tab, the Color tab, the Fairlight tab, and finally the Deliver tab. And all of these tabs are so important because each one is meant for a specific part of the editing process. You have the media tab and from in there, you dump all your media in and that's where you organize all of your media coming in. Your, are your audio files, your movie files, your A-roll, your B-roll, all that stuff, assets come within there and you organize within there. And then you have the cut tab and within the cut tab, it's simply where you're making like your first cut of things. So you're doing your select cuts of throwing footage in here, throwing footage in here, listen to your A-roll, cutting it up that way. And it all happens in there. And it's made in an interface where you don't have to zoom in and out and you're not jumping all across the timeline. It's all just in the front face of your eye and it's all right there. So, and then the tab after that is the edit tab. And this is by far the most important tab because this is where you do your actual edits. So now you go in there from what you did in the cut tab and this is where you do your speed ramping. This is where you do your, your effects. This is where you, this is where you really tell the story. And I think this is really, it's a fun tab. It's where you cut up tighter. It's where you make things tighter and it's where the edit really comes together. But if you're in final cut, if you're in premiere, this edit tab is really the tab that all of these softwares is. And this is the tab that's the most relatable and where you really start to learn how Resolve works. And then you have the Fusion tab and think of the Fusion tab like After Effects and it's a graphics tab. I have not really jumped into this yet. It's something that I'm starting to jump into, starting to get used to. But the fact that you have like your After Effects program strictly in the same software is something that's really attractive when I start to get into it and start to learn how it works. And then you have the color tab and everyone knows DaVinci Resolve is a coloring app, but it's actually an editing software too. But the coloring DaVinci Resolve, I'm gonna go into it later, but it is night and day better than working in LUTs and Premiere and all that stuff. And I'll go into it, but they took the coloring and they really made it the best in the business. Then you have Fairlight and this is strictly audio. And I found myself in this a lot more. I found myself a lot more obsessed with sound design, with having this tab and being able to isolate my A-roll to my B-roll to my sound effects and all that stuff and my background music and really, really honing in on different levels of audio and making sure everything is uniform throughout from my end point to my out point. And being able to do that in one place is really beneficial. And you can make the levels bigger so you can see the audio levels better. And it's just a nice way they did it where it's separate from video. And then deliver, this tab sounds like what it is. This is where you render out your final project and throw it into your queue and finally hit, finally hit that render button. All right, so we can talk about color now. And color is a node-based system. And what I mean by a node-based system is it's simple. So you have your first node, which is basically in my role, my F-Log footage. And then from there you add a node and you add like your F-Log to your Rec 709. And then you add another node and from there you do your color correction. And think of it as different LUTs in adjustment layers or different adjustment layers layered on top of each other. But this all lives in one place in one specific clip and it's this node-based editing. And it's simple. All you really need is two or three nodes to make your color the way you want it. It's not like one of those professional movie colorists where you see 50 different nodes. It's That's the intimidating part of it, but it's really simple. And the stuff you can do with the nodes is you can isolate different colors in different areas. You can isolate different parts of the scene and really hone in on the coloring. But within this color tab and these nodes, this is also where you can use what I've used a lot of, which is the camera tracking, the masking out of people's faces and creating the alpha layers with alpha nodes. And you can do all of that within there too. So it's real nice that you're able to have a specific area that you can do all of this stuff. And then Fusion, I talked about it before. This is just like After Effects and I have yet to jump into it, but it still looks like that node-based process. And it looks a lot like, I think how Cinema 4D works from the little time I've spent in there. But I'm real excited to jump into Fusion, learn how to do it. You'll find me on YouTube a lot in the next following months, really learning how this Fusion app works and how I can make it work really with my edit tab and go together to make videos kind of come together in this one way. And then Fairlight, I talked about it earlier, but I'm gonna jump back into it. Fairlight is strictly audio. And what's nice about Fairlight and what I found very beneficial with it is that you have your audio tracks and just your audio tracks. So you're not 
it's not hidden between different video tracks and you can really isolate what audio you want to track and how you want to do it. You can normalize everything on audio level one. You can normalize to another peak everything on audio level two. And it does the same thing as it does in Premiere in Final Cut, but it just does it a different way. In a way that's when you jump into, when I'm doing, when I would be editing in Premiere and I'd be doing audio and video, it'd be in one place, like an edit tab. And from there, you're not focused on that one thing where I found myself when I jump into this Fairlight tab, I am strictly focused on just audio and videos almost secondary where I don't even know it's there. So I'm really honing in on my audio and making sure my levels are where they are, making sure the sound effects are where I want them to be and really just making sure the audio is at the place it needs to be. So is there a learning curve? Yeah, there is a learning curve. The biggest learning curve for me was the keyboard shortcuts. The keyboard shortcuts that I was so good on with Premiere were all of a sudden gone when I jumped into Resolve. But what you can do is you can jump into the preferences and you can have your shortcuts built off of what they are for DaVinci Resolve. You can have them built off of what they are in Premiere. You can have them built them, you can have them build what they are in Final Cut. So you can still have those shortcuts that do the same thing, but within this program. But for me, I went away from that because I wanted a new set of shortcuts. I wanted what DaVinci wanted to create for me. And I have the DaVinci shortcuts in here, but you can also go in and set your own shortcuts. So like if you have a hybrid of the two and you have to use the two, you can mix it up where some things are specific to DaVinci, some things are specific to Premiere. But then there's what I miss. And what I miss most with Resolve is Photoshop. And there's not really something like that in Resolve where I still find myself using Photoshop. And what I miss is like the dynamically dumping a Photoshop file into here and being able to change something in the Photoshop file, hit Control S and or Command S and have it seamlessly dynamically link over and switch in my project. So there's gonna be things I wish DaVinci Resolve has and I'm just not there yet. I'm still pretty new in this program and there's not things I really wish it had. One thing I wished is that more people used it and that it wasn't such an intimidating switch because with that I could talk to more people about it and I could learn more from other people because one of the ways I really learned Premiere was watching other people edit and being able to jump into other people's projects. But I can't really do that with DaVinci because not many people use it. So that's something that I hope down the road, I start to see a lot more people use it and a lot more people I know use it. I think it's time for anyone that's on the fence about this software to make the switch to DaVinci Resolve. I mean, I was on the fence about it for months and the fact that I was on the fence about it for months and I finally did it, it was the best decision I've made, I think, in my editing career up to this date. And the storytelling, the editing, it's something that's supposed to be fun and Premiere just wasn't fun for me anymore and it was so buggy for me. So being able to jump into this and have fun with it, I recommend it to really anyone. And this isn't going to be the last video I make on this subject. I want to be an advocate for how great this app is and how anyone should switch and learn this software. And that's what I'm here for. So make sure you leave a comment below. Ask me any questions you might have about this and my switch over. And until the next video, make sure you hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and I'll see you guys in the next video.